Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Today, I want to share with you about the purpose of anointing. The purpose of anointing. Um, but before I talk about the purpose of anointing, we talk about what anointing makes you into. In other words, we say anointing makes you. Tell somebody, anointing makes you. I didn't hear you say anointing makes you. I'm not still convinced. Say an anointing makes. As in making. The making of destiny is through anointing. This is one thing that is becoming clear. The making of destinies. The making of destinies is in anointing. Tonight, God will make destinies. God will make. When God says, I will make you. God met Abraham at the age of 75. And God does not mean, you know, he doesn't waste words. He does not speak with tongue in cheek. He, he speaks clearly. He, he told Abraham, I will make you. And a, a man who was 75, who was childless, and God was saying, I will make, I will make you. The word make is active. Is intentional, deliberate. The maker of this thing did not just think, he, he went to work. He assembled together and coupled it assemble coupled it package tested it and god said i will make you means i will deploy my energy i will deploy my strength i will deploy everything that is in me that is required for this to come to pass god says i will make you if water is available god can make mountain out of water how do i know he made a father of nation out of a barren man when God says, I will make you, you may laugh. Sarah laughed. And God said, you love nothing. You love nonsense. I will make you, that your womb, I will make that womb fruitful. And Sarah laughed. I said, do you even know how old I am? I said, I, before I formed you in the womb, I knew how old you will live before you were born. I will make you. That's the God I serve. I serve a God who can make you. He can make something out of nothing. He can make honor out of dishonor. He can make a miracle out of mistake. He can fashion something from nothing. God said, I will make you. So when I'm saying today, there is a grace that is coming upon this place that will make somebody into something specific. Let me tell you truth. God can make you. God can make you i said god can make you god can make you can we make a transition let's make a transition from can make you say god will make you i said god will make you lift up your two hands say i am ready to be made by god amen be seated. There are two levels of making. There can actually be three levels of making. There is the biological, physiological making that has brought you into you, the genetical you, that makes you resemble your father, that makes you resemble your mother. Then there is the other making, the making of the society, how the environment has made you into who you are. The association, the relationship, the environment, the influences making you. Then there is the third making. So many people in life have the first making, the second making. They never experience the third making. And so they end up at the second level association. What they studied in the university. Their capacity, the connections they have. The reach. Their influence. And all that few people experience the third making the third level of making 
this is where miracles happen this is where god is wonderful when god makes somebody a contradiction to the mother and the father and this is where anointing is such a strange experience i want to announce to your spirit i'm not talking to the you that sees me i'm talking to the you that the spirit of god sees in you i'm speaking straight to you to your destiny i'm speaking straight to your your life i'm speaking straight to your name i'm speaking straight to your purpose i'm speaking straight to what is hidden from your eyes i'm speaking straight to what is buried and needs to be uncovered and be resurrected i'm speaking to the lazarus that have been abandoned in the grave for four days and the, the sisters are crying i'm speaking to the dry bones in your environment i'm speaking to the abandoned you the forgotten the overgrown you the forest too i'm speaking god will make you Tonight, there will be instant healing miracle happening to somebody. Now, let me tell you what gave me this confidence of boost, the making. First Samuel chapter 9, verses 15 down. Verse 15 down. Now, the day before Saul came, <laughs> Saul, verses preceding this particular verse, talks about Saul looking for the father's donkey and so the donkey was missing and Saul went searching and he went searching for a donkey and he needed to consult to consult the service of somebody who had the grace of seeing you need somebody who has the grace of seeing and let me tell you when i'm talking about the grace of seeing be careful because in our days there is a prosperity of familiar spirit who see and they actually see except that they see and lead people astray because the result of their seeing takes people from christ what they prescribe what they do and where they lead people to is not god they say by their fruit you shall know them when i'm talking about seeing is revelation that comes from god that opens your eyes to see and how god will help you to understand i know he will help you so you need somebody who sees and saul decided to consult somebody in the service of seeing now that is a background for this particular verse. He said, now the day before Saul came, because he was told that there was a seer to go. A seer will tell you where to find what you are looking for. The day before Saul came, the Lord said something. The Lord revealed. The Lord had revealed this to Samuel. You know, the God I serve is the God of revelation hallelujah Amen. glory to god so now the day before Saul came the lord had revealed this to samuel revelation tell somebody revelation Amen. and god says about this time tomorrow i will send you a man he's a man i will send you a man raw material a man of flesh and blood the son of kish he has a father he has a mother from the tribe of benjamin a man without serious pedigree a man without serious resume, credential, and all that. I'll send you a man. Did God really mention the name? Let's find out from God. I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. No name. No name because he had no name. Before God, he had no name. He had no serious name. He was called Saul, but God called him something else. And God was interested in inaugurating the one that he called him. Let me tell you, God has a new name for you. Amen. God is not just interested in calling you what people call you. God has another name. That's why if you don't discover your personal name from God, you have not yet started serious life. Because others may call you one thing and God says, if you know what I call you, then you will not answer the name that you call. God has a name. 
And so God didn't call this. He said, a man is coming. A raw material. Anoint him. Look at this. Let's read it together. I say what? Anoint. Can you hear that? He said, make him. Now you know what I'm talking about. He said, anoint him. So if you remove anoint, you can replace anoint comfortably with make him. Make him a man until Saul met Samuel. He had no dream of royalty. His father was not kingly, his mother was not queenly. Saul was just an ordinary fellow who was looking for a donkey. But the making anointing of God was waiting for him in front. Every destiny has a making anointing waiting in front. The point is this. If you are not curious enough to search, if you are not bold enough to take the first step towards it, you live in your now forever and you die without the making. And you die not becoming what you were made to be. Very few people end up at their burial being buried whom they were made by God. Majority of people are buried half people. Half, some completely empty, completely outside what God made them. There is who God made you to be before you were born. And God told Jeremiah, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. That one is set apart. But there is what the, the, the society and family makes you. That's not who you are. But that's where a lot of people live. Jeremiah had to answer a call. And when he complains, I'm too young. God says, shut up. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and I set you apart. Which means there are many Jeremiahs who have been made, set apart, but they never prophesied. There are many Esthers made to shine as great stars that never became. Why? They never walked into the place of being made. The problem we have in our days, there is an agenda of deception from hell. There are too many people carry the horn of oil and what is inside is not oil. That's the problem we have right now. And the reason, the result of that is that many people have lost faith. In oil carriers because they no longer know who is who it is an agenda from hell it is meant to rob the church to rob destinies of what God made them to be because until you meet the oil carrier of your destiny you will never be made into what you were made to be look at the scripture now God told Samuel I'm sending you a man God needs the oil carrier. And if you compromise and for any reason you lose that horn, that means many people who depended on that oil to be made into something we may never be. But the point is that you will still be comfortably whom you are seen to be. It is a serious issue. And so there is deception from all sides. People carrying the horn. And what is inside is not oil. And so sometimes the oil carrier is not seen. But the point is this. You need a Samuel. Whom God has sent you to. And who carries the oil. That can make you. The issue is. You may not know it. Or you may take it lightly. Or you may be deceived. Or you may lose faith because of making wrong oil carriers. Or because of many things. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That on the day of your appointment that will make you, you will not miss it. That the man who carries the oil horn 
that will make you you will not miss that man whether the man has to be on television for you to see or on radio for you to hear whether it is on the internet whatever way whether it is a book i pray in the name of jesus that you will meet your samia in the name of jesus so anointing makes Saul came to Samuel as a man and the intention of God is that as a man will meet you a man will go back a king oh, am I talking to somebody let's go to that scripture glory to God he said, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, anoint him leader over my people Israel. He will deliver. Now there is a purpose for the anointing. God has a purpose for a life. He said, this man will deliver my people from the hand of the Philistines. So this man had a mission for God's family. And it was designed by God. He said, I have looked upon my people for their cry has reached me. Which means this man is an arrow from God's quiver. Oh, glory to God. This man was a response of God to affliction. Oh, am I talking to somebody? You don't even know why you are who you are. You don't even know why you are sitting in this place. There is a cry God wants to deal with. Oh, there is a tear God wants to wipe away. There is a wound, injury, God wants to heal. The point, the point is this. We just think of being a child of God, of knowing God from the point of view of what I eat, what I drink, myself, myself. You don't even know there is a larger context. There is a problem God has made you a solution for. And until you begin to expand your mind to see life from that point of view, you will never become you. Because you were made to be too big for yourself. He said, I have seen the cries of my people. And my response is that a man is coming. An ordinary seeker. What he's looking for is not even kingship. What he's looking for is just food. What he's looking for is just provision. What he's looking for is just a donkey of the father. What is a donkey? A donkey belongs to the family. The horse belongs there also. But donkey is not horse. Horse is made for power. Horse is made for splendor. Horse is made for royalty. A donkey is just a beast of burden. A burden carrier. Saul was looking for burden. How to meet the burden, the, the need of the stomach. What will be carrying food for them? A donkey carries farm produce. A donkey carries trouble. A, lo a donkey carries load. So Saul was just interested in what will carry the load. What will pay the next bill. What will supply the next food? Saul was just interested. And the donkey was the father's donkey. It was just a family property. So Saul was just interested in the personal thing of the family. But God told Saul, I made you for a kingdom. I made you for something too large. Some of you, if you were to see what God has made you for, your mind will change. So Saul was looking for donkey. But God set up a kingdom for him. He said, make him, anoint him. He will be a leader. I have seen tears that I want to wipe away. I have seen pains that I want to take away. I have seen disgrace I want to change. I have seen, I have seen dishonor. I have seen shame. I want to change all that. Will you stand up and say, I am tired of the small thing. I am tired of the small life. I am tired of the small world. I am tired. Lift up your hand and shout, I am tired. I am tired of being small. Tell seven people, I am tired of being small. I am tired of being small. I am tired of being small. I'm tired. I am tired. I'm tired. Do you know what it means to be a businessman? Do you know why many businessmen cannot make the next million? Because they don't see beyond their nose. There are people that God has designed that your millions will wipe their tears. And until you can incorporate them into your agenda, you are not yet ready to make the next million. 
Because the anointing for business, because when we talk about anointing, we associate it with, oh, somebody will preach and sing. No. When God says, I will make you, means anointing makes you into what God made you to be. Am I talking to somebody? Say, anointing. There are people that were made to make money. And the purpose of making that money is not you. It's to wipe tears. It's to take away disgrace of a people. And so if you live without that awareness, you miss your wealth. That's the reason why people rise and fall. Because there is always a purpose. Oh, glory to God. Am I talking to somebody? God will make you. Stand up. I said God will make you. Whoever is standing in this place and God has made you wealthy so that you can bless others. I don't care what poverty is afflicting you. I speak in the name of Jesus that by anointing God will make you. It is an anointing that makes a destiny. When anointing makes you, when anointing meets you, it makes you. Be seated. It will make you. Whoever God had made you to be, you will not escape it during these eight days. Ah! Revelation will harass you. Ah! Revelation will slap you. Ah! Revelation will take peace from you. Revelation will make you pursue a donkey. Revelation will set you in a direction. Revelation will make you uncomfortable. You will not escape this moment in the name of Jesus. You were born for a reason. And you were born for a season. There is a reason why God gave us revelation about a star. A star that can be hidden. Revelation is the key of life. Revelation is the secret of life. Okay. Now let's wrap it up. Verse 18. Samuel approached Saul in the gateway and asked, Will you please tell me where the seer's house is? Ah, I am the seer. Samuel replied, Go up ahead of me to the high place. For today you are to eat with me. And in the morning I will let you go. And will tell you all that is in your heart. Set up. Now, when people told Saul he needed seer, what was he expecting? Somebody who will see his donkey. But the day he met the seer, donkey was not mentioned. You will eat with me in the high place. Means we are traveling up. We are not traveling down. That's what true revelation does. True revelation takes you up. It doesn't take you down. At any point a revelation takes you down It's not from God True revelation challenges you So revelation is to take you to the high place That's why if you have somebody Who mentors you Who allows you to be comfortable <laughs> You are not blessed Your mentor Must set a bar too high for you And must not allow you to rest until you scale it. Saul was looking for donkey. But when he met the seer, donkey is not a subject matter. Whatever donkey that brought you here, God says I should tell you it's not a subject matter. <laughs> but in the process of looking for a donkey, God will take you to the kingdom. God will take you to the throne. God will take you to the high place. God will take you higher than your thought. Higher than your imagination. Higher than your expectation. The scriptures say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not been revealed to the mind what God has in stock for his people. Receive what is bigger than you. Receive what is higher than you. Receive what is taller than you. Receive what is more powerful. Receive what is larger in the name of Jesus. I serve a God who harasses a king and tells a king you can be bigger. I, say, I serve a God who harasses a prophet and tells the prophet you can enlarge your course. And Jabez said, God, that you will bless me. And enlarge my territory. Enlarge my course. 
I have been praying. He said, God, this whole world is my parish. I want to be the parish priest of the world. That Asia will open for me. That America will open for me. That Europe will welcome me. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Friends and Partners of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a covenant partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank, Zenith Bank. Account name, Grace Family Global Outreach. Account number, 101 42 9763. For inquiries, please call 081 804 33225 or 090-738-38742. To all our covenant partners and friends, we we'll say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 06346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.